Okay, this is lesson 18. Uh, the major concepts in lesson 18 are the way that we collide sprites. So really looking at bounce, bounce off, collide, and displace, and knowing what those four things are and how they're different. And then we'll be looking at set collider, which allows us to change the shape of the collider. So it makes our collisions more realistic for the sprite that we have. And then setting the sprite bounciness so when they bounce off of objects, you can actually um, change a variable to adjust that. Um, we are going to be looking at this. We don't need to know really the code behind what's going on with these. We're going to talk about it, but that's what abstraction is, is we um, have simplified something that's very complex with dealing um, very similar to what we did with is touching. Um, we didn't really have to know how it worked to determine if two sprites were touching. Same thing here is we don't really know, need to know how that works internally. Um, we just manage the complexity by, by knowing that these things do what they're supposed to do. Um, so let's kind of jump into this. So when I run this, um, we're going to have a giraffe and a monkey. And what do you see when these two hit or when they're touching? We should notice that the monkey's velocity gets what the sprites or the giraffe's velocity was. So if the giraffe is moving at a velocity of two, when it hits or is touching the monkey, the monkey's velocity now is a value of two. So we can actually use the blocks that we've done before with is touching and velocity to set those values. So in some of these activities, because we're going back in, I just need to change the version history. Um, to start over and we'll kind of go through each of these as we go. Uh, right now when I run it, uh, the draft will actually go through the monkey um, because I don't have this if statement with the is touching. So it just kind of passes right through. So I'm going to create an if statement and it says right here, um, try to use a plan and develop what is happening, what that should look like. Um, how can you make the giraffe move the monkey off the screen? Well, if the giraffe is touching the monkey, then what should the monkey do? Well, we're going to set the monkey's x velocity, or just monkey dot velocity x. And if we look up here, the giraffe is moving at one, so we could just set it to one, um, which would work. So we could run that. And there we go. So that works. The problem comes in then is what if we change this to three and run it? So it starts the monkey, but the monkey isn't the same as the giraffe. So to make this better, we would actually put giraffe dot velocity x. So that way, regardless of what the giraffe's velocity is, the monkey now gets that value. Let's move on. So let's look at this one. This one, the elephant is moving. We want it to cause the hippo to move. So if you look, it's moving at a velocity of a random number this time. So this is where we really have to be critical or, you know, have a mindset that if they're touching, so if the elephant is touching the hippo, then the hippo's, which velocity is up and down? Uh, that should be the Y. So the Y is changing as we go up and down. So it's getting more negative as we go up. So the, the hippo's velocity dot Y is going to get the elephant's so elephant.velocity y. Um, if we didn't do that, because it's randomly generated a number from negative three to positive three, um, that, or a negative three to one, negative one, I'm sorry, um, we need to make sure that it gets that. If you put a random number here between negative three and negative one, it might not be the same random number as this. So you have to say it gets whatever the elephant's velocity is. Here we go, should touch and should 
push it off the screen. Okay, so that's that's that one. Let's move on to activity five. All right, let's take a look. So now we're going to use this sprite dot displace. So this is new. Um, the problem is is that um, Okay. Oh, I know why. So here we go. So we're going to run this, and it's got hippo displaces elephant. And we want to use the elephant to push the hippo off the screen. So this is actually the act, the opposite of what we want. So it should be elephant displaces hippo. So now the elephant should win the battle and boom, it's going to displace the hippo off the screen. So the order in which you put these sprites is very important uh, for what the interaction is going to be. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This one we're now going to be looking at collide, bounce, and bounce off as well as um, displace. So um, currently we've got parrot displacing penguin. So we should have the parrot push the penguin. Perfect. That's what we expected. And if I put penguin displaces parrot, it should just push the other way. So instead of displaces, let's do collide and see what happens. So we're going to switch out the displaces block for collide. Now the easiest way to do that is just to type this word. So I'm going to just highlight this. You don't have to hit the delete key or backspace. I see a lot of students doing that. When you highlight it, if you start typing, it will type over it. So they'll save you a keystroke um, when you do that. So we're going to do parrot collide with penguin. And now you can see that essentially a parrot collide with penguin is very similar to a penguin displace parrot. Um, they're, they're essentially the opposite. Um, this is typically used if we set the penguin's velocity to zero and let's pretend that the penguin is a wall. So the parrot will collide with the wall and stop. Um, so just like if you, you know, ran into a wall or you pushed against a wall, like it's not going to move. This is the immovable object and this object is going to be colliding against that immovable force there. I'm going to put this back to negative two. Now let's see what bounce does. So parrot bounces penguin. So it looks like they both, um, so they when they bounce, they both go in the opposite direction from where they came, is what that looks like. And now let's check with bounce off. So this one, if you look at it, the penguin remains un unchanged, actually. So if you notice its velocity, it continues here. And then the parrot, we can actually put one of these watchers on here. This is the kind of the fun part. So I'm going to do parrot dot velocity x. And I'm going to do a penguin dot velocity x. And we're going to be able to see, hopefully, these two values. So if you notice, we got two and negative two, and then boom, negative two and negative six. So that's interesting um, how they calculate that negative six on there. Uh, let's do a couple little tests to see how they get that value. Let's make this a negative one, and let's see what the result is. So it goes to negative four. So I think what it does is it doubles this velocity and adds this one to it, is what I'm guessing. So let's try this, um, let's make this three. And let's make this, actually, let's make this four. So if they double this, that would be a six, and then add that to it, it should be a negative 10 um, is what we should get here. And there it is. So that's, that's their algorithm for changing that velocity. They double this one, and then they invert this to make it negative um, on that. So that's kind of cool. So that's how bounce off works. If you do bounce, let's go back to bounce with different speeds. See what happens. 
So this one go, um, goes 4 and this one goes negative 3. So they switch. It looks like they switch velocities. So you see that? They switched velocities in that, in that situation is what bounce does. So interesting to kind of look at how those interactions work. If you go to help and tips and go to sprite interactions, this does a really good job of explaining those concepts as, as well. Um, and this shows a few different interactions. So with initial velocities with the guitar, um, stationary guitar or a stationary note to see what happens when you have bounce off, bounce, collide, and, and displace. So these are all great um, little animations here to see how those things work with some, with some more detail. Seven. We want the basketball to bounce off of the wood, um, but let's just let's try something and see what happens. So we're going to do basketball bounce off wood, and let me run that. Okay, so that's what we wanted. We wanted it to bounce off of the wood. So again, how we read it. If we if we did bounce, so instead of bounce off. So think about what we we talked about with bounce. Bounce, they switch velocities. So what do you think is going to happen if they switch velocities here with a bounce? Oh, there goes our floor. So you have to be really careful. Again, that's why we, we add some code, we test it. We add some more code, we test it as we go. Uh, because sometimes it doesn't work the way we expect. But this one is the bounce off. Okay, this is activity eight. Um, so it's, let's see what it says here. Oh, interactions are not remembered by the game. So if you want them to interact, they have to be part of the draw loop. That is critical. So if you notice here, when we create our sprites, and then you can see, look at our collision, it's here. So it doesn't remember that it's colliding because that block of code is doing a lot of processing in real time. So if you only did it at the very beginning, it's not gonna check anything. So this turtle.collide needs to be inside of the draw loop. And typically I put my collisions first, so that way it can, it can check for collision before it does anything else with the motion. So you can see that I'm collided with it, and you'll notice, like, why is it still collided way out here? Um, and the reason is, is because of your animations. So if you look at the animation of the tree, look at all this space up here that it's treating as the bounding box um, of this. And um, same thing with the turtle. You have all this gray space. So we're going to learn a little bit later how we can change our collider type to get rid of that, um, that issue. That's this one. Okay, this is activity nine. We're going to run it. We're going to see that these two coins, when they hit, they collide, but they don't collide the way we would expect. If you took two quarters and slid them against each other, they're going to bounce and kind of bounce back on the same plane that they were coming in at, not go off completely weird like this. And the reason is because the collider type. So if we put these debug um, commands to true, it's going to show us what the colliders look like. You can see it's a square, so it doesn't treat it as a circle. It treats this as a square because that's the collider type. So when they interact, they kind of hit on edges and they cause them to bounce off at weird angles. And it's kind of weird that if you just change this to a 51, the gold coin was bouncing this way. Now it actually bounces the opposite direction because of just the way it hits. And this isn't normal. Like this isn't, this isn't very good physics when we look at it, and that's because of this collider type. So we're going to look at changing that collider type over the next few lessons, or few activities, I should say. So let's look at this one. We're going to change this, this uh, collider type. So I went ahead and did this. You can see that I've got a gold coin set collider. All I did is come down here to your set collider, change the sprite to your name, so gold coin. And again, you don't have to hit delete. You just start typing. And then we're going to change this to a circle. Same thing with that silver coin. So when we run it, it's not going to treat them as circles. So when they bounce, they bounce more realistically um, when they collide with each other. 